Hi, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this uh, Facebook Live discussion on faith in politics, God and country. I'm so excited. I'm Bob Scott, uh, coming you, to you today from uh, Araney, Frankfort, Kentucky. Uh, we are at the headquarters for the Commonwealth Policy Center, and I am blessed today. I, I can't tell you how much I have been looking forward uh, to today's discussion because um, I've got some great men of God uh, that have agreed to join us, and, and uh, we are blessed as a state uh, to have two of them currently serving uh, in office and two uh, hopefuls that, that are running for office right now. They, they are all pastors uh, from, I like to say, the mountains uh, of, of our state, and and, you know, it's really cool, too. We have pretty good connections uh, right now, considering that, because the connections down there isn't always, uh, from a technological standpoint, always the best. But so blessed to have them. Gentlemen, uh, welcome. I'd like to uh, go through uh, and welcome each and every one of you. First of all, Ryan Dotson um, is, is here. Ryan is a candidate uh, for state representative from over in Clark County. Uh, welcome, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, another one is Brother uh, Chris Fugit. Uh, he is currently a state uh, represent, uh, uh, yes, yeah, state representative uh, from from down in the mountains as well. And Chris, I've gotten to know him. Former state trooper, I might add. Uh, yes, sir. And a pastor down there. And and again, welcome, Chris. Thank you, Bob, for having us today. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have. Uh, Bill Wesley. Uh, Bill is also a candidate for state representative. Uh, we'll be covering uh, potentially basically five different counties. So you're going to have a lot of uh, area to cover. And Bill, you you also pastor two churches as if you don't have anything else to do. Yes, uh, and, and you do a lot of other things within your community, uh, you know, in service. And again, uh, welcome to today's uh, call, Bill. Thank you, sir. Amen. And last but certainly not least, uh, the senior member of our group, a guy that I've uh, gotten to know uh, really when I first came on with the Commonwealth Policy Foundation about five months ago, uh, Representative David Hill, we, we were doing a lot of phone calls with our executive director, Richard Nelson. And David, you're one of the first calls that we made and uh, you are uh, currently a state representative um, and uh, just a, a person that a lot of people will look up to you. I told you earlier that my uh, mother and father-in-law uh, think the world of you. Uh, the, the Clarks uh, from uh, over in Montgomery County, which is one of the areas that you obviously serve as well. But welcome to our call today as well, David. Thank you, Bob. Glad to be with you. Thanks for having us. Amen. Um, gentlemen, I think we would all agree that this is... Uh, an unprecedented season, certainly in our lifetimes, um, as to what's going on. And, um, you know, a lot of folks, uh, a lot of fear out there, you know, from the standpoint of concern about this unknown and unseen enemy, uh, but, but has affected a lot of people. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is uh, if, if you get the virus, the odds of of your recovering are very, very good. Um, and I was telling you all before the call, um, I've got a couple of very good friends, one in particular that um, was in very, very serious condition, uh, but she recovered, praise God, uh, is doing well. Uh, and, and so that is the good news, you know, that, that uh, the recovery aspect of this is very high. But before we get into that, um, you know, I'd like to ask, being the fact that you all are pastors, every single one of you, uh, successful pastors with, with great churches uh, down in the mountain area, um, what caused you, what, what was the, and I, I know the answer, part of the answer uh, to it, but what was the thing that led you to bridge that gap, to go from being a pastor to decide to uh, run and actually serve in state office? And I, I'll start out with you, David, since uh, you currently are serving. Uh, again, thank you, Bob. Uh, well, about six years ago, or actually uh, about seven years ago, uh, I, I really felt uh, an urgency in my own life to uh, proceed even farther than the, than the ministry of my local church. Uh, I'd been a, I've been a pastor now for actually 22 years, and at that time I'd been pastoring for about 15 years. I had always been actively, very actively involved in, in political campaigns, uh, 
hadn't really not necessarily working so much on a campaign, but supporting those uh, candidates that uh, had the same values and ideas uh, and, and beliefs that I had. But I really felt a call from God in my life to, to go one step farther and, uh, and possibly seek uh, the state representative office in this district that I reside in. Um, me and my wife, we, we prayed about it uh, a lot for several months. Uh, we really, to be very frank, we didn't really seek the advice of anybody else except between <laughs> us and the Lord, because I knew if I did, I'd get a lot of different ideas and opinions and yes, you should, and no, you shouldn't. But uh, we basically decided between ourselves with the Lord's guidance that uh, we wanted to pursue this. And, uh, and, and, and it wasn't really something that I necessarily chose to do i really felt a i really felt a call from god just like i felt a call in my life to, for the ministry many many years ago mm -hmm. and i uh, i really felt like this was something that i needed to pursue and uh and i knew really knew nothing about uh really how to even go about it but uh we we filed for the office and uh and after we uh, after we filed for the office, we began to, to, to go about campaigning. And, and of course, then we started getting a lot of advice, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And, right. and, and to be very frank, there was some, there was a quite a bit of negative comments that came back from people of the, of different churches that said, no, you shouldn't be involved in that. And we shouldn't be mixing those two together. And, uh, I, I felt like to that just out of curiosity, pardon me. What was your response when those questions came? Well, when those questions begin to come and uh, they they begin to, it, to be very frank, it was probably a lot more comments, Bob, than it was questions, but there were questions of why are you doing this? Okay. And uh, and people told me that, you know, you can't mix the two together. It, it will ruin you. It'll ruin your reputation. It'll ruin your ministry. <laughs> it'll ruin your church. Uh, but, uh, we, we just told them that, listen, this was not something that we, we chose out to do, or I chose out to do. It was something that I felt a call from God. And, and if I knew the Lord was in it, I was going to go forward. And if, Amen. if he had it, uh, in his plans for me to, uh, win the election and serve in, in state government, then, uh, it would work. And, uh, so we pursued it and we, we unseated a, uh, an incumbent, that had been in this district for many years. Uh, I actually became the first Republican ever to serve this district in the state house ever in its existence. Well, and well. Uh, so, uh, and as I campaigned that very first year of campaigning, I never hid the fact that I was a pastor. I, I actually promoted that, uh, went into people's homes, uh, prayed with them right there in their homes as I was asking them to vote for me. Many of them wanted me to do that. And uh, so as we as we continued to to pursue that, we were fortunate to be elected and uh, have been elected uh, two other times since then. Uh, first was elected in 14, then 16, then 18, and then running again here in, in 20. But uh, it was uh, it wasn't easy and it's still not easy. It's, it's very difficult. And I have a very, very um, wonderful congregation of my local congregation that supported me and got behind me. And, uh, and they know the reasons that I'm there. They know the, they know the purpose that I'm there. Amen. And I certainly, I certainly like doing things for my people in my district. I, I represent about 47,000 people in this district. And I love being able to bring projects to the district and that that's that's wonderful but my main goal and my main purpose in frankfurt right now is yes to be there for my people but it is to promote the cause of jesus christ amen and i'm honored to do that and i try to do that every opportunity that i get and i assume the con uh, the congregation your church is, is doing quite well you know you didn't see a a, a backing of out of numbers uh that, that uh, i'm assuming you guys are, are 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 doing quite well there as well too we're we're still doing real well. Of course, this this COVID situation has has hit our church mm -hmm. hard. I mean, not yeah. not we we do not have people that have personally had it within the church, but of course, it caused it's caused a, a lot of fear among people. I will admit yes. that. And and I've actually told them several times. I said, "Don't be led by fear. Be led by faith." Amen. And, uh, and again, we uh, our church is uh, 
we're probably back to about 55 to 60 percent capacity right now. Uh, but we've kind of hit a little, we've hit a plateau right there. We, we can't seem to really move much of asset over the last few weeks, but the church is doing really well and, and God is blessing. And, uh, but, but I, I, not only our church, but I know every church pastors I talk Amen. to we've all, you know, we've all took a really, a we've took a pretty good lick and a punch from this and it's, uh, it's been difficult, but, uh, thank the Lord we're, we're working through it. And, uh, but again, I'm, I'm just honored to serve the people, but I'm honored, I'm more honored to let my life be a, a light and a witness uh, in the Capitol. And I've got the opportunity to not only share it with people in the Capitol, but with people even our, in, in our nation's capital. And so I've been very blessed to be able to do that. And, I, and given that opportunity, I'll continue to do that. That's awesome. Thank you, David. And Bill, let me uh, come over to you because now you're a candidate uh, coming into to political office. You just heard what David shared and um, obviously mentioned earlier, but you have a lot on your plate uh, from the standpoint of pastoring not one, but two different churches in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, what was your reason for, for engaging and getting involved? Well, I'd like to also add, uh, Bob, I, I want to say thank you for having us on here today. And it, it's an honor. Uh, I got to throw uh, Brother Chris and Brother David in here because they're part of my testimony. Uh, when I first started getting compelled by the Lord to run, uh, somebody uh, under the Matt Bevan administration gave me uh, Chris Fugit's uh, phone number. So I called Chris and told him what was going on with me. I couldn't sleep. I was just uh, a mess in a lot of ways because this was a new, new rim for me. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, so as me and Chris had a, a discussion about that, uh, we still haven't met at that time. Uh, he gave me uh, Brother David Hale's number. So I called David. I told him what I was going through. And uh, he, said, he said, you sound just like Chris Fugit. And uh, so he, David said, Chris called me with the same questions, Bill. So now I know why that uh, Chris gave me David's number. So in other words, we all three felt the same compelling, uh, the same symptoms, what God was doing. And Amen. I believe God is raising up people for such a time as this. Uh, I'm thankful to be, uh, work along with side with, with these men that's called. And so I'm looking forward to being with them in Frankfurt. Amen. Amen. And thank you. And Chris, since uh, Bill uh, was bragging on you a little bit, again, you have been in the fray. You know, you... you uh, have been serving in the house uh, along with David. Um, what's your thoughts right now as far as the whole idea of, of faith in politics? Well, Brother Bob, you know, I think that there's, I think there's two lies that the devil has spread across the world, and especially our nation. And the first one is that revival can never happen again. And the second lie the devil has spread is Christians should not be involved in politics. But when you look at the founding of our country, then our country was founded upon the principles of God's word. Uh, this, this country was founded upon a group of people that wanted to come out from under the Church of England to come to a place where they could worship God. And, and you know, there's so much, there's so much our, our country in our, in our country's history, it's important for that history to be taught because a lot of people don't believe or don't even know that our, that our nation was founded upon the, the values of, of the Bible. Yes. You know, in, 2000, in 2008, I was called to preach. Uh, I, I, I surrendered to preach in 2008. I have to say I fought it for, for a long time. Um, I, was, I was a state trooper detective that, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed my job. I loved every minute of it. And um, I enjoy going to work every day and trying to make a difference, you know. And, and uh, then in 2011, our church started December the 4th of 2011, Gospel Light Baptist Church. It's in an old bar building that used to be called the Hillbilly Palace. <laughs> um, and then in 2013, I retired from the state police, so I did both for about 15 months. And then in 2016, you know, I, I really felt the Lord leading me to uh, run for state representative. And, and here's, here's the truth. I'd heard about 
of people being pro-life in the legislature, but there was no pro-life bills coming out. I'd heard about, you know, the, that there were people that stood for, for things that uh, marriage as the Bible defines it. Uh, just, just things that, uh, that, that was talked about, but there was never any bills that, that furthered the cause of life. And, 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 you know, our, our uh, area was being decimated. Our jobs were being taken. Perry County and half of Harlem is what I represent the 84th district. But, you know, we'd lost so many coal jobs and, and all that. So, you know, I prayed about it. I asked my brother, Jeff, uh, who pastors Clay's Mill Baptist Church in Lexington about, you know, sure. Sure. yes, sir. And, uh, you know, he, he told me, he said, you need to call David Hale. And so I <laughs> called, I called brother David Hale and I, you know, I just asked him, I said, man, you know, I, I don't want to do anything that will hurt our church. Uh, but I want to see the cause of Christ, uh, being brought to, to the political area, to, to the arena and not just talk, but, but to be able to see pro-life bills passed, presented, uh, to see jobs brought back to, to our area, uh, just to see that, that, that the light of God is, is shining. And, and Brother David Hill said, you know, brother, you, you just need to follow what God wants you to do. And, and so that's what we've done, you know, and I was blessed to be able to, to uh, have a great, great people in my district. Uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of people that, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of talk out there that that all all this party's bad and all this party's good. And that's not true. I think it's more it's not Democrat Republican anymore. I think it's good versus evil in the world that we live in. Yes. And uh, I think it's a great spiritual battle. And I, you know, I'm thankful that the people of my district allowed me to come to Frankfurt and to serve them and to serve God in the way that God uh, you know want, wants me to serve Him. And so. You know, since we've been there, Brother David Hill has been a great example. He leads a prayer group uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and, and many times in our offices, there'll be a group that meet together to pray. And uh, But Brother David Hill has been a great example, a great leader. But, you know, I'm thankful that, you know, we've had a lot of pro-life bills uh, passed. We've, we've just done a lot of good. I think God has used us in a great way. I'm excited about um, uh, these two men that are running that, that uh, prayerfully they'll be there with us. And, you know, I've got a race coming in, in November myself and I pray the people of my district, uh, you know, allows me to go back, but I pray most of all that I stay in the middle of God's will. I don't want to get outside of God's will. Uh, the, number one, the number one goal in my life is to reach people for the cause of Christ and lift up his name. And I never want to get away from that, you know? And so, but I, but I'm thankful that I get to serve as a state representative for the 84th district. And, uh, you know, that's just why, why I got into it. You know, it's God, God led me, God allowed me to do it. Our church has been blessed. We've, we're, we've seen a lot of people saved and baptized and, and, uh, you know, our church again is probably at 50% of what it was, maybe a little less than 50%, but I'm thankful to be able to preach God's word and, and stand for him and stand for our people in East Kentucky. Amen. Amen. Good, good words, uh, Chris. Thank you for sharing that. In fact, you know, as you were talking, uh, one of the things I thought about uh, of the original signatures to the uh, Declaration of Independence, uh, approximately half had some kind of theological training, you know. Um, so uh, we are a nation founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Amen. Uh, and I thank, I thank God for that. And, and quite frankly, that's the reason I feel that our, our nation has been blessed. And uh, Ryan, I don't, I don't want to leave you out of this discussion. Um, I know you're, you're an incredibly busy man. Uh, you, you operate businesses, successful businesses um, uh, in the food industry, real estate. Um, but you also pastor uh, a great church, you know, over in Clark County. Um, what brought you to this particular uh, point in your life where, where you now have decided to toss your hat in the ring? First of all, I'd like to say what an honor you guys. Uh, you can feel the Holy Spirit as everyone's talking, and uh, that's a very powerful thing. Uh, for me, uh, walking in this dimension is, uh, is an extension of who we are. Um, we're not just ministers in a pulpit. We're, our life is ministry not just our calling. And I feel like that God has opened these doors because there's a difference, Bob, in believing in something and fighting for something. 
And God is raising up people who's willing to draw the sword and fight yes. the good fight of faith. Not only in the social aspect in the uh, uh, in our communities, but also in a political arena. And uh, you know, and I commend these men who have taken on that uh, mantle to be able to step into that realm. And uh, so for me, God had been dealing with me several years about being involved in community service, and I have been. Um, and to me, this is just an extension. This is one step further. And what it does, it creates a platform none of us would normally have. It'll open up doors for us to be able to speak into people's lives that would have never heard us before. So I see this as an opportunity to further the gospel and yet protect because we have a governor that would love to turn Kentucky into another California. And so we need to rise up and be able to defend our uh, Christian values and be able to speak the word of God, give people hope and do things the right way. Amen. Amen. And, you know, it's interesting because um, as we do find ourselves in this season and you as pastors, as you've already mentioned, are, are dealing with um, the fact that you, you have had to see some cutbacks as far as people attending. And I'm sure you all have uh, taken a deeper dive into technology uh, through mediums such as Facebook Live to uh, stay in touch with your body. I know my church, I go to Simpsonville Baptist and uh, they have done that very thing, you know, and, and, and keeping that going. And, uh, you know, the other question that comes up, and we, we recently did some research um, and found out that, and this is very interesting, that, um, in, that one in five evangelicals didn't even vote uh, in 2016. Uh, and again, think about that. One in five uh, folks that identify themselves as being an evangelical Christian didn't even bother, the, bother, bother to vote. Um, there's approximately um, 90 million Christians in America right now, today, who are eligible to vote. Uh, 40 million, uh, unfortunately, failed to vote in presidential election cycles. And one of the things we've done here at the Commonwealth Policy Center, uh, we started um, a movement called Faith Wins Kentucky. Um, we're really excited about it. Uh, for those of you all that are watching, tuning in, if you haven't had a chance to go to that site, I encourage you to do so. Again, it's faithwinsky.org. Uh, go check it out because if, you, if you're not registered to vote, um, please get registered to vote. You can actually do it on the site. Uh, we provide a direct link uh, that you can fill out a form and make that happen. You, ha you have up until October the 5th uh, to get registered. Uh, number two, uh, we're asking that you make a pledge, take the pledge to vote biblical values uh, as well. Uh, and in doing so, as a way of saying thank you, we're going to actually give you a free gift uh, as an added uh, incentive bonus. And then thirdly, and most importantly, uh, when it comes time to, to vote, go out and vote uh, Christian biblical values. Uh, and we're, we're really encouraging that. And uh, again, we're blessed to have men such as yourself. Uh, you know, out there representing and, and doing the things that, I'll just be very frank, a lot of folks would never want to do, you know, and that's step into the arena. Uh, and what are some of the things, I'm just going to throw, toss this out on the table. I know we, we have maybe five, 10 more minutes to go uh, in this discussion, but what are some of the things that you're hearing from your constituents? Um, you know, we, we know why you've engaged as far as personally, but what are some of the things uh, your, your constituents uh, are telling you uh, that's important to them right now. And anybody can take it. I'm hearing, uh, Brother Bob, that uh, people is proud that Christians are standing up right now. We have been told for so many years that it's not good for uh, mixing God with politics, but we should have God in the center of our life, uh, number one, above all. And and I'd like to read a verse to you, if, if that's okay, out of the yeah, book of Judges. Do. It says, and they took the things which Micah had made and the priest which he had uh, had and came unto Laish, unto a people that were quiet and secure, and they smote them with the edge of the sword. And what that tells me is as long as we remain quiet and secure in our own little towns, we can see the enemy running rampant. Uh, we have heard so many people say, well, it's not right to judge. But Jesus said, judge a righteous judgment. Mm -hmm. And so we need to stand up as we're not doormats because we're Christians. 
uh, we, we've been taught over the years and heard probably over the years, at least over in my district, 91, a lot of people has believed that Christians shouldn't get involved in politics. Mm -hmm. But we have all through the word of God. David was a man after God's own heart. Uh, he was in politics. And uh, so if, if we don't have these men and women like Deborah, Esther, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the list goes on, Hezekiah, uh, these men and women stood for righteousness. And I believe we're getting ready to see a divine reversal in not only in this nation, but our state. There is 120 counties in the state of Kentucky, like there was 120 in the upper room. And I believe like men and women of God that's joining on uh, this, this platform, standing for truth, and it's going to put the enemy back in its place. Amen. We're, I, I believe we're going to see a change. A divine reversal hit because men and women of God came together and prayed. And I'll never forget the honor that I had to come when I was invited to the policy center to open up in prayer. I uh, met with Chris Fugit and some other representatives before they went in to vote. Uh, this, this is going to make a difference. Uh, prayer is going to change things. And I love what our vice president says. We are Christian, conservative, and a Republican in that order. Uh, we're we're going to vote for Christian values and, and uh, based on the biblical truths. And so I'm, I'm glad that we're going ahead with this. I'm glad the church is standing up, starting to stand up because we're not doormats. And uh, we, we, we need to stand for truth and righteousness in this day. Amen. Pa powerful words. Um, anyone else? Uh, what are you hearing from, from the folks in, in your district that you're representing, uh, Chris or, or, or David? Well, my, you know, I, most most of the people in my district, especially uh, small business owners, you know, we've lo I have a friend that had to close down a, a business because it was just young and, and it's just stages of, of just starting. And and so he's had to he's had to shut down. There's a lot of concern from our local businesses. We you know, we've got to get back to work. We've got to get our people back to work. We you know, our small businesses, Walmart, all those big businesses are doing good, but our small businesses, the people that, that are from here that have worked and hard, uh, hard and sweated to earn what they've got, you know, they're losing it. And so we've got, you know, that's the biggest concern. I think one of the big, big concerns is why hasn't the state legislature done something to uh, curb kind of the, uh, the, what's going on with all the restrictions and, and all that. And, uh, you know, the, the really the state legislature, if we're not in session, we have no power to control anything. That's correct. And, and so, you know, the, the governor is the only one that can pull us into a special session. And, you know, I would just say to our small business owners, just just try to hang in there. Keep keep, uh, you know, keep working hard. And, and I believe and, and again, let's pray together and ask God to bless our communities and to see our businesses grow. Our schools, you know, some of our schools, our parents, some of the parents have contacted me, you know, wanting to go back to school. Some have said we're not ready to go back yet. So it just, you know, it's a thing that, that we've got to trust the Lord to give us wisdom to make the right decisions. But we have to open things back up. If we don't, we can't survive. If you look at yes, cancer, yes. If, if cancer had a recovery rate of 98%, what would we think about cancer today? I wouldn't want it, wouldn't want you to get it. Right. But at 98%, wouldn't we be happy with that? I mean, I mean, if 98% of the people that said you have cancer, uh, wouldn't it be great if, if they would recover 98% of the time? And this virus, you know, I know it's real. I've had family that had it. Uh, but but I also know that, uh, you know, and I've had friends that have passed away from it. And so, you know, I think it's important that we get our life back to, to living and not letting life live us. Uh, we said that a lot of times when I was with the state police, we saw people that were in addiction and they were allowing that drug of choice to live their life for them. And I'm afraid that as people, uh, we, we begin to let this virus live our life for us. And, and God doesn't give us the spirit of fear. Uh, but he gives us the spirit of power and of love and of sound mind. Amen. And we ought to be, we ought to be strong. We ought to make good choices. We ought to be clean, not, not hugging around on each other and, and shaking hands and stuff, but we ought to get back to living. We have to get back to living. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to live our life, to live our life for him and to impact somebody else for a good reason. 
Yeah, thank you, Chris, and wonderful words, and, and, and obviously right on the money. Uh, David Hill, um, I know, uh, just expanding just br very briefly, because our, our time is, is close yeah. to being up, but uh, uh, what, what Chris was talking about, uh, trying to engage the governor, um, you know, I think there's some concern out there. And what he said is absolutely 100% correct. By, by Kentucky state law, um, there's really nothing the legislature can do when it's out of session. It, it, it that, has to be- That's, that's has correct. To be called, yes. Has that's to be called absolutely. back in by the governor if he decides to do that. Um, have you all made any attempts behind the scenes to either do that or converse with the governor? Uh, where are we at on that? Well, let me let me just add to what Chris said, Bob. He he actually hit it right on the hit the nail right on the head there. Uh, small businesses in my community, especially some many of the small food service businesses, uh, smaller restaurants, uh, they're struggling. A lot of them have already closed and probably won't open back up. And so, our, our people are wanting to go back to work. Our people are wanting to go back to school. Uh, and and I, again, I think we can do those things safely. I really do believe that. Uh, but it seems like that our governor has uh, using his executive powers to almost instill fear into people. Um, and and I, I agree that uh, and what Chris said was exactly right. The legislature, our hands are tied as to what we can do as long as we're not in session. Um, and, and just to touch on what you ask, uh, no, uh, and, and I respect Governor Bashir. I, I do. He's in a very difficult position. Uh, he, he's got a, he was thrown into a very difficult uh, ta uh, position there to deal with this. But he has, again, and I say this out of respect, he has basically taken this upon himself to make all of these decisions without any input from the legislature. Uh, and he has not contacted, to my knowledge, I know he hasn't contacted me for any input, and I don't think he's contacted any of, of the folks in our caucus. But one of the things that I, I found uh, very ironic the other day was actually in, in hearing some of the members of his own party, some of the representatives said that he hadn't even contacted them. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily, he's just leaving out our caucus. I think these decisions okay. are being made basically by himself and the people around him. And again, uh, I think there's been a, a great attack upon the church. Uh, I, I, you know, we see, we see uh, even back a few months ago, it, it was ironic to me that we had all the liquor stores open, but we couldn't keep the churches open. Yes. We had the abortion clinics open, but the churches couldn't stay open. And uh, it, it just uh, it just seems like there's almost a double standard there, and I think the church has uh, has come under a great attack. But uh, I'm like Chris. I mean, we and these other two gentlemen, Ryan and Bill, and I, I appreciate their efforts and wish them the best. And I look forward to them being in Frankfurt with us. You know, we've got a we've got a pretty good foundation of, from our caucus right there in Frankfurt right now. And to add a few more people into that uh, into that mix, I'm not I'm I'm not talking about just our majority caucus. I'm talking about the people inside that caucus that have the beliefs that we have. That you know we we need people in there to oppose these these gambling bills that we know are coming up. We we need people there to stand against the alcohol legislation that we know is going to come and rise up against us. And so I'm looking forward as we go back in January. And again, I have a race in November myself. Uh, and I, again, I, I hope that my constituents and pray they'll send me back to Frankfurt. Uh, but, uh, and I believe that they will, but I'm, I'm looking forward to adding people there to give us a, a voice. And, and I think we're getting a, a good core group of people uh, that can, can make a difference. I really believe. Amen. That. Amen. Uh, thank you, David. And uh, I want to close out with Ryan. Um, you're a business owner um, and and uh, in the food service industry at several different uh, sites in the state. Uh, and I know you've been deeply impacted by this. Um, what's your thoughts right now? And then I'm also, as, as you share that, I, I'd also like for you to, to uh, do a final prayer uh, for us as well, if you don't mind, brother. Go ahead, Ryan. Pre-COVID, um, I had approximately about 200 little over 200 employees. Uh, but when COVID hit back in March, uh, we had to shut down our dining rooms. Fortunately, we were able to keep our uh, drive-throughs open. 
but at this point we're a little less than 80 employees and across all my businesses. Um, with that being said, um, we're just now beginning to open some of the dining rooms at some of these locations. So we're, we're bringing employees back, but it's very hard uh, to bring people back that are drawn to sun employment with the extra monies. And that's one of the big issues right now because they make more sitting at home than they would coming back working mm. in a fast food restaurant. So that's the yeah. challenge we're having right now. So to that point, and as all the other brothers have mentioned, that's some of the, what the constituents around here, they want to get back to work. They want things to open up. Um, they want some sense of normalcy again. Uh, the panic, the fear has, has driven wedges in families, in communities. Mm -hmm. People have become tattletales. <laughs> I mean, people mm -hmm. are reporting things to health departments and trying to get uh, political leaders involved in things that they see the, you know, the quote unquote against what the governor's uh, policies are. So it, it's driven such a huge wedge and, and, and there's such divisiveness within our community even. Um, so we want to we want to bring that, you know, in our job as ministers and now stay, taking a step into the political realm, I feel like our job is to bring healing and, mm -hmm. and promote that and to bring unity uh, in our communities and into our state. You know, this is a great commonwealth. I was born and raised in eastern Kentucky in Pike County. Uh, I've been down here 28 years, been pastoring 24 years. And, uh, and to see that God's hand is raising up people uh, to be a voice, to be a mouthpiece. We're not an echo. We're a voice. And God has given us that voice. And I look Amen. so far, God willing to working with all of you. And, and you too, Bob. Uh, you Amen. guys are guys. And uh, so with that being said, we'll just close in a word of prayer if that's okay. Man, please. Thank you, brother. And good words. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to gather here today and share our hearts, our minds, and things that you've deposited in our spirit. Lord, I pray for every individual that is watching right now, those who are just tuning in, maybe just to see what's going on politically. But God, there's deep issues within their lives that, Father, they need you to minister to. There's family issues, there's sickness, there's healing that needs to take place. And we pray by the Holy Spirit, God, that you would minister to everyone watching, everyone that will watch this program. And Lord, I pray for my brothers who have taken up the sword to fight the good fight of faith in Frankfurt. And Lord, I pray that you'd empower them, empower me. I pray for the Commonwealth Policy Center. Lord, as they as they pick up the mantle, Lord, to, to spread conservative values throughout the Commonwealth. And Lord, I thank you today, Father, that we have one that we can turn to such as you in a time of crisis such as we are facing here today. Lord, that you would empower us, God, to bring healing to our communities, to bring healing to our our, our state and God that we can be a beacon of light that other states could look upon us and see what Kentucky's doing and emulate us. Lord, let us be that beacon of light. Help us to be that kind of people. And God, we just ask your blessing upon all that we do. And we ask it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. You know, thank you, you Ryan and, and thank, thank you, Chris and Bill and, and David for uh, just stepping forward uh, and uh, putting your, your life on the line and your family uh, as well from the standpoint of uh, the commitment that you're making for our state. And, you know, the, the thing that binds us together, obviously, is our faith in Jesus Christ, uh, but our love for this, this wonderful state that we live in. You know, um, Kentucky uh, means so much to each and every one of us. And I know that each and every one of you are working very, very hard uh, to make the Commonwealth better for everybody. And I just want to say uh, and let you know that uh, Richard Nelson, myself, and the entire staff at uh, the Commonwealth Policy Center uh, prays for you all daily. And, and we're trusting uh, that God's going to use you all in mighty ways to uh, bring forth uh, goodness for each and every uh, person in our state. Uh, on behalf of the Commonwealth Policy Center, I want to thank each and every one of you who tuned in today. Just know that we love you as well, and we're praying for you. We'll see you next time.